Are you looking to buy some British birds? Well, if that's the case, then this is the video for you. Today, we're going to be covering what I look for when I buy British birds, and that's in the UK. You might have different laws and things like that over in the US and in Australia uh, and elsewhere where the birds are kept. But in the UK, I'm going to be covering the laws of which you have to abide by when you're buying British birds, but also the different things that I look for when I'm buying the birds to make sure that I get the best from what I'm buying. This is O.C. Avery, let's get into it. So of course one of the main things that you're going to look for when buying any bird, not just British birds, is the birds are in good health. You want to make sure that the birds are perky, they're, uh, they're, they're busy, their eyes are open, there's no problems like that, their eyes are the correct colour they're supposed to be. Uh, and by that I mean if it's usually a black eyed bird then it needs to be, and if you're buying something like an albino or you're buying a, uh, an Isabel or something like that, it's going to have pinky eyes, don't worry about that, that's alright. So you want to make sure it's bright, it's perky, and it's active if the bird sat there on the perch all fluffed up not quite right then i'd advise you you, uh, you move on from that bird it could be suffering from something like coccidiosis or any other disease like that and you ideally don't want to be bringing that back to your bird room although it is something that generally is built up in the birds anyway so you, you're not really going to be able to avoid the quarantine inside of that uh, but you want to make sure that the birds you buy are in good health so when you bring them home you've got the lowest chance of them losing you know losing them uh, before they come to be of use to you and with that maybe you do some quarantine i will usually do some quarantine uh, when i'm bringing birds in unless i do know the breeder quite well i know how well the birds are kept and i make sure that the birds are completely fine before i bring them here but otherwise do quarantine the birds just so you don't introduce any disease or anything that's going to cause you a problem in the future to your stock so in the UK, you have to have British birds closed rung by a certified uh closed ring uh, supplier so in the uk that's the bbc which is a british bird council or the ioa which is the international ornithological association and you have closed rings that are of a certain size to go on that bird for example red poles red poles are a size b ring they should have size b and that goes for common red pole lesser red pole arctic red pole and mealy red pole if you're looking at something else like that then maybe you've got a green finch well a green finch should be size e a bullfinch if it's a native bullfinch a d if it's a uh, siberian bullfinch a size e so it all depends on that so make sure that your birds are closed rung and a closed ring is a metal band a uh, metal ring that goes around the bird's leg when the bird is young to prove that it was bred in captivity you put it over the, the uh, three front toes over the thumb toe and onto its leg as a chick and the leg grows around that so the band can't be removed as an adult uh, obviously a split ring is a plastic ring uh, which is split obviously and what you do is you put that on the bird and that's something that we might use if we're looking at who's related or we're looking at who's going to go where or anything like that but that does not count as, clo as, as close ringing obviously and it does not uh, prove that the bird was bred in captivity so make sure that when you're buying these birds it's all right if it has a split ring on as long as it has a closed ring on the closed ring also has a bit of information on the bird so it'll have the year now generally the birds are always going to have the year on them that they were bred unless the breeders ran out of rings and then we'll use a ring from a previous year to make sure that that bird is closed rung which is obviously the best case scenario if you don't have the rings for it if you've ran out or you've lost them or anything like that use a ring from a previous year then that bird is closed rung and you're not going to have any problems there uh, so it has the year it was bred it has a unique number on it so it might be 3024 uh, and it's a size b ring and you know that there's only one bird with 3024 on it from the bbc which is a size b in 2021 i know that for a fact i know that one of my birds in here has got that uh, and and that's all right that's fine and uh, that's just a bit of unique identifying there and it can be then traced back to the breeder if if any problems arise or anything like that 
So there is a few things with that that you need to make sure you meet. So if you're going to buy some birds, I'm presuming if you're here for this video, you might be looking to get your first British birds. Well, there's there's certain levels of the Wildlife and Countryside Act um, of which you have to you know, know where the birds are from. So if it's a Schedule 3 bird, which is a lot of the you know more common species, the red poles, the greenies, the bullfinches and stuff like that, but you can get Schedule 4, which is uh, hawfinches, uh, and there are different schedules which have slightly different criteria to meet of course make sure that the birds are closed rung is the best thing to prove it's spreading captivity but just do check that out i'll leave a link in the description to uh, the wildlife and country uh, countryside act uh, just to make sure that you are meeting that and you you do understand where the birds are on that so if there's anything else you do have to do then you're completely within the law and you're completely safe for that a common misconception, which is something that I had when I uh, when I first started, was that you had to have a certificate or something to prove that the bird was uh, clo uh, like captive bred as such. Uh, and the proof of captive breeding is your closed ring on the bird, providing it's of the correct size. Um, I was completely under the wrong illusion of that, and I thought that you would buy a bird and you would receive a certificate from the breeder that said so and so has bred this. Uh, this is a captive bred bird. This is the ring number, etc., etc., etc. But it wasn't. So. Just just make sure that you don't, uh, you know, you, you don't expect that because uh, with most British birds, I can tell you, you don't need a certificate. Obviously, if you are looking to buy a peregrine falcon or uh, some bird of prey, then there is certain certificates you have to have like that, like an A10. But for passerine species, generally, you're not going to have to have a certificate. A closed ring is sufficient enough evidence. So now that you've met the law and everything's fine like that, we need to look at why why have we brought these birds on and what is the focus? What is this bird going to do uh, for us? Are we breeding that bird? Are we got them simply because I want to put them in a big nook savory in the garden, which is obviously fine? Then you need to make sure that you assess that. So if you're looking for a bird in the back garden, uh, you know, back garden aviary, you're just going to put it in there and enjoy them like that. That's absolutely fine. And really, you're not going to need to look at the uh, finer details if you're looking to breed from these birds and there's certain things you're looking for if you, especially if you want to show your birds you need to make sure that you're meeting uh, certain show standards with them and you want to look how can this bird improve uh, my stud or how can I build a stud from this bird so you're going to be looking at the age of the bird now the age of the bird uh, will affect how you're going to use it so if you're wanting to use the bird for a mule or a hybrid well you want a one you know you want a current year bird you want a bird that hasn't bred before and um, in that it's you know it's less than a year old and if maybe you'll get away with it with a bird that's uh, over one year so I'll be breeding a 2020 uh, bred bird with a, a 2021 bred bird this year in the 2022 breeding season but that's as far as I'll go with it when you're doing that initial pairing so the age of the bird does matter like that if it's if you're looking to build a stud uh, and you're starting off with them well uh, you know a two or a three year old bird that's of good quality and is of what you need is a good bird to start with if it's a proven breeder if you can get a proven pair even better uh, and you you know you want to make sure that you're bringing in birds that are going to age you as best as possible so there's that to look for there's the feather quality has it got the good feather is there any problems with it has it got feather cysts if it's got feather cysts uh, uh, just be aware of that when buying the bird uh, and hopefully i'm sure the breeder would tell you most guys are very good and uh, will be completely transparent the whole time with you uh, when you're buying birds especially when you're starting out um, and there's different things like that is the color of the bird so there's two different colors generally uh, you know without going into too much detail there's buff and there's yellow feather so it's about the color intensity of that bird well if i'm buying a buff hen i want to make sure that i'm pairing it to a yellow feathered cock the last thing i want to do is pair a buff feathered cock to a buff hen you double buff in you're going to get birds with quite a washed out color and uh you know quite soft feather and then that's where you can cause problems like feather cysts you don't want to be doing yellow to yellow really you know it'll improve the color uh, but you're going to get really shorter uh, harder feathers and um the color will be great but then you don't want to be overdoing that so just be aware of that so make sure that you you're matching the feather types correctly uh, and then there's the mutation of course it depends on what you're wanting to do uh, but 
don't you know don't, don't go and buy a, a cinnamon cock to an isabel hen expecting to produce isabel red pulse for example because it doesn't work like that you're going to end up with a nests of cinnamons no isabels uh, but the cocks will be split for isabel so just make sure you understand a bit about your genetics there uh, how it works and how you can make it work for you for what you're aiming for uh, and it's just different things like that make sure you you understand what you're looking for and the results of your parents don't just go willy-nilly i'll buy that buy that hopefully it works and then you're disappointed with your results come breeding season maybe you're looking to bring some shape or some size into your stud and you've built a stud over a few years but you've noticed that the birds aren't quite at the correct size they need to be let's say for example you're looking at green finches well i've got green finches of quite a quite a, a, a range of sizes i've got uh, two cock birds out in the flights which are really quite big birds uh, but the color's just nowhere near as good as this smaller cock bird who's got really good color uh, and lovely you know lovely bird uh, and it's just if you're trying to look at how you you've got a, a stud of small birds and you want to increase the size in them we'll make sure that this bird that you're bringing in is going to do that for you don't go for something that's as small as because it's not going to benefit and ideally if you are going to a breeder and he's happy to let you bring something then maybe bring a bird along and compare it and look for something well this is the size of a general average size of the birds in my stud I want to increase that size so let's buy something bring something in that's of the correct size that i want or getting closer to that size to then work the blood around and and increase the size overall of the stud if that's something that you're looking to do if it's the shape perhaps you've got the shape that's uh, you know you've got the size but the shape's not quite there we'll make sure that you you're buying the bird with that shape or as close to it as possible so you meet it so if you go to a breeder realistically this is not going to happen uh, but if you were to show and or as a big sale like stafford or newick and you see something that catches your eye you think oh i'll tell you what I'd, I'd fancy that for the breeding season bit of something fun to have and um, that well make sure that you can meet the requirements um you know quite a few people will will turn up to a show they'll see a pair of blackbirds for sale brilliant right we're gonna have a pair of blackbirds they don't break the bank so they bring home a pair of blackbirds not realizing that when you've got seed eaters like red poles and, and green finches that a blackbird can't you know it's not going to be able to survive on a diet of just seed it needs different things so a lot of people will feed dog food cat food stuff like that to it and which is completely fine and the breeders do uh, but make sure that you can uh, meet the requirements of that bird before you go buying it bringing it home uh, and then realizing or or the bird dies because you've not fed it the correct things um, and and then you wonder why and, and you post on Facebook you don't know why this bird's died and it's because because you've made a mistake in, in what you've bought you couldn't meet the requirements um, and and you've, you've cost the bird's life so just make sure that you can do that you know it's something that people can do and will do if you're buying it a soft build generally is is something that if you're if you keep hard bills or maybe you keep canaries um, and it's usually a lot of novices uh, starting out really early don't get me wrong i've made the same mistakes i've not i've not lost a bird from that but seeing something thought i'd fancy that and then uh, not realizing that the, the work I've, I've taken on although it's been fine and we've, we've worked it out um but just make sure that you can do that and you don't go from uh having a few canaries in an aviary to suddenly deciding we're going to breed avocets we've bought a pair of avocets at a show and now you've got to have a shell a shellfish based food you've got to have a wader food you've got to have all this that you haven't got and you haven't got a big enough flight and, and then that's a problem so make sure i you know I keep emphasize it please make sure you can so you don't end up causing any birds any problems suffering or you end up having to rehome them very very quickly from uh, originally what you'd planned on doing of course make sure you do your research as well and this is this is not always the case um with, with people but if you're buying something and it's again it's mainly soft bill here we're talking is if you're buying something like um a pair of jays let's say uh you know do do those birds get along with the other birds that you've got let's say you've got a huge flight in your back garden and it's it's 20 feet long and it's 10 feet wide it's quite a good size flight and you've got a few different birds in there and you bring home a pair of jays well how are they going to respond to the uh, the, the the other people the, the other 
airbirds which are in that flight well they're probably going to kill them because the, the the type of bird that is same for if you bring home a pair of birds that are territorial that can't go together uh, through the, the winter then make sure that you can meet that don't you know don't have one single large flight you go and buy a pair of soft bills uh, that then you went over the winter the kill well once killed the other because uh, the territory in the winter make sure that you can again meet those requirements you can separate them and you can care for them to the best of your ability so if you really are just starting out with British birds, where's the best place to source them? Well, there's three places I'd tell you to go. Um, and the first leads on to the second one. So I'd tell you to go to a show. If you go to a show, you can talk to breeders about the birds that you're interested in. So if you want to go and you want to start out with green finches or you want to start out with siskins, then go to a British bird show. Have a chat with uh, have, have a chat with the people there, and I'm sure that they're able to direct you to the right person who you want to uh, you know who wants to be sourcing some birds from. So talk to the breeders then at the show, and then try and source from the breeders. Then you've got a source of birds that you can keep going back to when you need more because you will inevitably need more whether that be actually needing them or will that be you craving them because that's generally what will happen is you'll go i, don't, I fancy another pair of those and, and you'll go and yeah we can we can fit a flight in there and then it, it all all snowballs from there as it's done for me and i'm sure pretty much everyone else in the hobby uh, so make sure you you're talking to the breeders and you can source your birds from those breeders when you need them as well as being a good source of information and experience who can push you on to the right people as well as push you in the right direction with how you need to care for them how you're going to breed them and different things like that because it's all learning especially for the first two two years um you're just finding your feet with it you're working it out how exactly it all works and then it all starts to fall in place you know i've been breeding these uh, british birds now for four or five years and it's been absolutely fantastic and i'd say the past two years i've had a much better result from the experience of the first two so that's how it's gone for me um and then as well if you if you let's say now you're at stafford show you've gone through a breeding season with two pairs of siskins and you fancy some more and you see a lovely pair of siskins on the bench well uh you know is that a good source of the birds and, and and a lot of the time it is you know a lot of genuine breeders good guys will go to these shows and they'll sell it on some of their surplus stock uh, and it's a good place to get to know people and get to meet people who you can then further source them from but always make sure again that with these shows there's always going to be those scumbags who are going to be trying to sell uh, wild birds and it does happen it's a real shame uh, i've seen it firsthand uh, and i sadly i have experienced it in the past um where you, you've seen a lovely pair of birds uh, for my example it was a pair of yellow hammers uh, at my first ever show at uh, my first stafford show a uh, beautiful pair of birds the rings look fine to me everything like that but obviously in the, the environment you're in you can't take the birds out and have a close examination the rings you're stressing them out as well as uh it's not a safe place to do it if the bird gets out or anything like that uh, and sadly i'd got these two birds uh that had uh, dodgy rings on they've been cut and then melted over they were actually um that they were continental rings so they were a different not bbc or ioa i thought it said ioa it said something slightly different and they were clearly wild caught birds which is a real shame so i i did the right thing and, and we went from there and and the birds are where they should be now so that's absolutely fine and um, with, with them now it's but it's a shame it happened it caught me out there but i've learned from that uh the birds to look out for are goldfinches there are people who turn up to these shows with a cage of 50 goldfinches which is about this big and the birds going uh, crazy uh, they're a good price because you think wow that's that's quite cheap for a goldfinch uh, but it's because the wild caught they don't have rings on or they've got rings on that are you know have been slit somehow squeezed over the feet they're too big or anything like that so be very careful be very cautious obviously when it comes to something like let's say you're picking up yourself a pair of siskins and um, and you'd spot a lovely pair of mutation siskins now mutations are unlikely and i mean very unlikely to be wild birds especially when you look at something like a cinnamon red pole 
they're everywhere you can pick them up quite cheap um and you know they're they're relatively easy to breed in that uh, if you pick up let's say a fao red if you see a fao red pole at a show very unlikely but that's going to be a captive bred bird every day because they're so hard to breed in captivity anyway the chances of a wild one being there being wild caught and sold on it's it's not going to happen uh, so there's always that risk um with your normal mutation birds but with your mutation birds you know red poles greenies they're going to be uh you know there's quite a few of those always available even mutation bullfinches yellow bullfinches uh your pied bullfinches anything like that it's unlikely to be a wild caught bird but still make sure it's got the ring on because that's what legally allows you to own it but also the bird has to have a closed ring on to be sold if it has you know if it's been bred in captivity i believe the law states that if it's been bred in captivity doesn't have a closed ring on you can't sell that bird you can only gift that bird uh, but then still try and avoid that especially when you're starting it out uh, obviously as you get to know people but anyway that's uh, that's it from there and just make sure that you are cautious and you do take the, the relevant uh, steps and precautions for when you get in these birds obviously they are uh, they're not cheap but they're brilliant birds very very good fun to have and uh you know i absolutely love what i do uh with having them all so just be you know be careful and hopefully you found some really good tips from this video things that you're going to be able to look out for when you get in some british birds whether you be a, a keeper already who's watching this or you're starting out with them so just be careful be cautious and enjoy the birds so thank you very much for watching everyone if you haven't already subscribe down below smash the like button and i'll see you in the next video